Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over these three thrift finds. Uh, I'm going to start by making some clay molds. Uh, I'm just using the air dry clay here with some with some molds and uh, I'm not even sure which one this is but I'm sure that we all have different uh, molds from each other and it really just put what you think will look good on this watering can and I put a little trim mold around the spout there because uh, the watering spout is actually missing and while I don't have any trouble selling these in my store without that I felt like it needed a little bit more detail because of that so um, I put these molds on and I glue them while they're wet with uh, I use clear Gorilla Glue and then I let them dry overnight and then um, they're ready to paint. Now I got lucky with this can because it, it was already painted black and had it not been painted black that would have been my first step because uh, I like to have something to distress down to a, a dark color and uh, that's going to be one of my uh, one of my colors in this vignette and so black is is a really good color for me to distress to but i always when i do that base coat i always use an enamel paint and then i use a chalk paint over the top because uh, chalk paint is wa water soluble until it is sealed and so you can just take a damp cloth and wipe it off and see that color underneath as long as your color underneath is not chalk paint also so I just go over this entire can with this white wax and then wipe it all off. And that white will settle down into all the little details and creases and, and give this a really pretty look. And also the flat areas will have like a milky color, uh, kind of an uneven milky color to, um, to the paint. And it just, it makes such a pretty look while it also seals it. Now also, if this were gonna be used outside, I would clear coat it, uh, but this is just gonna be inside decor, so uh, this wax will be enough to protect that paint. Now once I paint this, uh, this little handle with the top black, then this piece is complete, and what a difference it made in that little can. Now this, I don't even know what this is. It was some sort of shelf, and I took the little shelf out, and I, I decided to make it more of a bird house type decor. So I'm going to start by gluing a piece of trim on the top. And all this trim is, is just half of a square frame. So when you find these little frames, when they have some detail in them, uh, always pick those up if they're cheap because uh, you can use them in so many different ways. And I think this works really, it, it fit just right over this uh, roof and just added a lot of detail. So I'm giving this box also um, a, a coat of black enamel uh, over the en entire surface inside and out and um, and that will be my distress coat again. Now once that has dried and you only need one coat of that black uh, once that has dried then I'm going to go over it with two coats of the white chalk paint and in this case I'm using white linen any color of white that you want to use uh, but I feel like the white really updates and transforms this piece. Now I've taken a bird stamp here and stamped onto uh, to one layer of, of a napkin and I'm just going to I cut that image out and then I'm going to transfer that to the back and it just that paper just virtually goes away uh, when you're using just one layer of napkins. If you've never decoposed with napkins, uh, most napkins have at least two layers and some even three, and you just take that back ply off and you can stamp right onto that surface and cut it out. Just cut it as close to your image as possible and it makes a really simple transfer. And I put this bird in here a little bit up off the bottom so that I'm going to put a nest in here with some eggs and uh, you'll still be able to see all of the bird. Now I'm showing you here how to water distress this chalk paint. You just have a damp cloth and just rub it over that and look what a what a uh, good job that does with uh, 
with distressing. And I go over the entire piece like that, especially all over the raised edges. And there it is with the nest in it. And I've got that on a little, um, a little candle stick. And now we'll start with the tote. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just gonna go over the entire tote inside and out with a black enamel paint. Let that dry. And now we're gonna put chalk paint over the whole surface. Now I started out by painting the inside of this white also and changed my mind in the middle of it and uh, went over the inside with the yellow, a couple coats of that maize yellow that I used on the watering can. And um, this white did make it cover a little bit better than it would have the black, but I, I could have skipped that step and not had to paint the white first. But here it is all white, and then I go back and paint the inside only with, with the yellow. Now, I didn't mention that I did go back over the birdhouse with a clear coat uh, after it was finished. Now, uh, this one, I'm, I'm not going to clear coat once it's finished because I'm going to be using a wax on it. Um, now, here I'm painting this little rim around the very top. And it's very simple to freehand this because it's all raised. So if you're just even slightly careful, it's very easy to get just that rim. And I painted the handle here at the top of this one and decided to go back over it with the black because I'm going to be putting a black stencil on. Uh, galvanized used to be really popular, but I, I don't have any luck at all selling it anymore. So this really updated this piece. And now I'm just going over the front with it with a stencil. And um, again, just any stencil that you like. Uh, this is just more of a French country. Uh, you could give it a farmhouse stencil for that matter. But um, that, this is just the one that I'm using. And in hindsight, I would have, um, I do the top two lines in black here, and I'm just using a regular makeup sponge. Uh, but in hindsight, I would have done the top in black and the bottom line in black, and then left that center and did that in that maize yellow. But instead, I do the top and the middle in black and the bottom in yellow, but I just feel like that yellow didn't stand out quite as much as I would have had it to, I would have liked for it to. Um, so next time I'll, I'll know to do the yellow in the middle, but uh, maybe when you do yours, you can reverse that. And I think that made a really big difference in this item. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you've gotten some inspiration from it. And uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.